Shakers, make some noise if you love Jesus tonight. We welcome everybody watching online as well. Hey, dancers, dancers, come out the front for a bit. All you dancers, make some noise for our awesome dance team. I love this routine in this bridge bit. Can you show everybody this routine? Now, when you do this thing. You know what I'm talking about? Like this. Uh. Even on the darkest day, nothing will stop my praise. Nothing will stop my praise. in a tough circumstance and it's hard to praise. Sometimes you just don't feel like it. But that's when you need to praise the most. When you give to God a through and all kind of praise, He comes down with great power and He changes your situation. So tonight, can we give Him a through and all kind of praise? Planet Shakers, can we praise Him no matter what's going on in our lives? So I want us to sing this again. One, two, three, sing. Come on. 
someone's hill in tonight. Burning my heart. Oh, burning a hot sky. Burning my heart. Oh, fire of God. Come and burn. Come and burn in a hot sky.
you're seated. Here's what we're going to do. First of all, I want you to help me, and we have to. And it's not like, like mutual appreciation society. It really is where honor is due. There are, there are events and gatherings that inspire us. And then there are gatherings that are so prophetic. People come out of planet shakers with an anointing to change nations. You have no idea what that means. So I want you to help me just with the best praise to Jesus thus far. Help me acknowledge the mantle, the calling, the leadership of Pastor Russell and Pastor Sammy. Pastor Sam, Pastor Russell, Planet Shakers, World Changers, History Makers, legitimate World Changers and History Makers, changing the world. And before you're seated, before you're seated, my, my wife, Eva, Eva, she's here. Raise your hand, honey. And I know we're transmitting live, but Eva is from the island of Puerto Rico. Which means that Jennifer Lopez has nothing on that woman right there. And to the entire Daystar family, to Marcus and Joni, you know how much I love you and I honor you, you're changing the world. You're the conduit of Daystar. So before you're seated, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find someone, the person that you actually like, and tell them, come hell or high water, tell them, come hell or high water, I'm on my way to Rome. Now tell the other neighbor, the one you barely tolerate, tell them, come hell or high water, I'm on my way to Rome. Tell the neighbor behind you, tell him, neighbor, I'm on my way. Tell him, it's too late now. It's too late now. Tell him, the enemy should have taken me out when he had a chance before I came to Christ because it's too late now. As for me and my house, we are on our way to see the fulfillment of God's destiny and purpose and passion. I'm on my way. Somebody shout, I'm on All right, you may be seated, you may be seated. We're gonna expedite the process here, but here it is. Here's where the Spirit of God placed in my heart for you today. The title of it is, Come Hell or High Water, I'm on my way to Rome. You'll understand that in a second. The subtitle would be, do not, don't lower your anchor until you reach your destination. Do not lower your anchor until you reach your destination. It is the, one of my favorite stories in all of scriptures all the scripture from Acts chapter 27, the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is en route to Rome and it's perception versus reality. To the human eye, to the naked eye, he was on his way to Rome in order to face the music. He was prosecuted for preaching this new gospel, enticing revolt and instability in the Roman Empire. So he was found complicit in he was going to face the music with Caesar. And so it's Acts chapter 27. Let me read it for you. Verse 1. So it was decided that we would sail for Italy, for Rome. Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius. Verse 14, chapter 27 of the book of Acts. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Nor'easter swept down. The ship we were on was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it, and we were driven along. Verse 17, the latter part. Because they were afraid they would run aground, they lowered the anchor, and they, they permitted the ship to be driven along by the storm. Subsequently, by the way, the ship broke up into pieces. They barely made it to the island of Malta. They were drenched, they were soaked. Subsequently, then Paul has an encounter of a snake, and we'll get to that tomorrow morning. I want to share with you what God has placed. Again, come hell or high water, I'm on my way to Rome. Number one, number one, perception is not reality. It's not what it seems. Rome, somebody shout Rome. Paul was 
was on his way to Rome. Why Rome? What does Rome represent? Rome was the capital. It was the center of the most powerful empire on the planet at the time. Rome was the, U the UN, the United Nations of the early first century, since all the nations and all the roads led to Rome. And Paul was on his way to Rome because he was not ashamed of the gospel. Paul was en route to Rome because God wanted Paul to have a platform to amplify the narrative of the new faith. Here it is. He was not going to Rome under the best of circumstances. He wasn't going to Rome on a Norwegian cruise line or a Royal Caribbean. He was going as a prisoner on a prison ship. Here it is. God uses circumstances that seem superficially egregious to show off his glory. Let me reiterate, God will use circumstances that seem superficially egregious to show off his glory. Because to the Romans, Paul was on his way to Rome on that ship to face, to execute, to go through a trial. He was on his way to Rome to face Caesar, not just prosecution, but possible execution. But to God, Paul was on his way to Rome to preach the gospel of Christ. I want you to hear this. Perception is not necessarily reality. Paul is going to Rome, according to the human eye. Porque la regó, hizo algo malo, lo dañó. He's going to Rome because he's going to face trial. And he may be crucified or decapitated. Yet in reality, he was going to Rome because in Acts chapter 23, verse 11, four chapters beforehand, God told Paul, Paul, I'm going to get you to Rome. And this gospel will be preached in Rome. Here it is. Here it is. It's to the human eye, Paul is going to Rome because he's in trouble. And it may be the end of his life. But God already preordained Paul's trip to Rome. It was planned out. It's not what it seems. So let me tell you what God placed in my heart for you today. Here it is. Just like with Paul in your life, perception is not reality. What do I mean? This is for someone. Here it is. Right now, it may look like the devil is winning in your life. It may look like hell's about to celebrate. It may look like you will never come out of what you're going through. But it's not what it seems. Because God is turning it around in your favor. Let me prophesy. What looked like your worst defeat will actually emerge as the greatest victory thus far in your life. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm on my way to Rome. No, 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 no. Tell your other neighbor, I'm on my way to Rome. Let me tell you one more thing, just like Paul in Rome. What, what you're going through, let me speak to you prophetically. What you're going through is about to catapult you to where God is taking you to. Which means what? It means that God will turn it around. Perception is not reality. God's plans, Isaiah 1427, cannot and will not be stopped. I want you to, I want to, permit me to reiterate that the reason the enemy has shown up to attack you is not because of the foolish things you did in your past, it's because of the glorious things you're about to do in your future. And the reason, the reason all hell has risen against you as of late has nothing to do with the things you have done wrong. It has everything to do with the things you're about to do right. So I need you to put a shout on your lips and a praise in your heart because you are on your way to Rome. High five your neighbor. Tell him I'm on my way to Rome. Tell your other neighbor, I'm on my way to Rome. I'm on my way to Rome. Tell him I'm on my way to Rome. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Really, really, it's, now here it comes, we gotta, number two, you are either storm driven or destiny driven. Acts 27, 15, the ship was caught. The ship was caught by the storm. Verse 17, I love this. They prefer to be driven by the storm. Verse 18 says, as a result, because of fear, they were violently battered. What drives you? 
Christianity is less about what we drive and more about what drives us. What drives you? We are all driven people. We are either driven by the past or by the future. By the pathetic or the prophetic. By problems or promises. By nightmares or dreams. By the flesh or the spirit. By Google searches or godly searches. We're driven by something. We're either driven by drama or by destiny. So what drives you? We are all driven people. Cada uno de nosotros somos conmovido por algo. Algo nos empuja. What drives you? You know, some of us, and I'm not going to say I was never this, because I was. Growing up, I started preaching when I was 14. And Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. But we're either driven by the praise of people or by people's criticisms. And it drives us to react or act differently. Here it is, by the way, as it pertains to the opinions of others. If their praise didn't make you, their criticism cannot break you. Don't ever let your problem drive you. Don't let your storm drive you. Don't let hell drive you. And we have too many believers that are more driven by drama than by destiny. We have too many believers that spend more time reacting to what comes from hell rather than what comes from heaven. Do not be driven by what you see. Be driven by what he said. Romans 8, 14, for all who are led slash driven by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So let me prophesy to you in the nombre de Jesus, from this moment on, you and your house will be driven only by the presence and the glory of Jesus. Pastor Sammy, Pastor Sam preaching this morning. I'm going to say it one more time. From this moment on, you will not be driven by the pathetic. You will not be driven by hell. You will not be driven by your mistakes. You will not be driven by what others think about you or say about you. You will be driven by the presence and the glory of the risen Christ. As a result, your destiny will be greater than your drama. And your promise will silence the problem. And your miracle will redeem the mistake. And your dream will put an end to the nightmare. And your blessing will overtake the brokenness. If you believe that, raise your right hand and repeat after me. Say, I'm on my way to Rome. If you really believe it, raise both hands and say, I'm on my way to Rome. And if you really believe it, I want you to shout and say, come hell or high water. I'm on my way to Rome. Number three, numero tres. Do not lower your anchor until you reach your destination. Let me read this. Acts 27, 15. The ship was caught by the storm. Verse 17. They were afraid, so they lowered the anchors. They lowered the sea anchor in order for the ship to be driven along. Mm. They were far from Rome, far from their destination, far from their appointment. But because of fear, they lowered their anchors. Fear prompted them to lower the anchor. Fear prompted them to get stuck in the storm. So let me ask you, have you ever been afraid? Have you ever fought off fear? If you have been afraid of something in your life, raise one hand. If you've been afraid of a couple of things in your life, raise both hands. If you've been afraid of so many you've lost count, raise both hands in a fight. So anyone here who has the audacity of telling me you've never been afraid of anything, arrepiéntete mentiroso en el nombre de Jesús. So what are you afraid of? They were en route to Rome. Paul was en route. By the way, Paul warned them beforehand not to go in that season, but they ignored him. They were en route to Rome. Paul has a date with destiny, literally. A God-ordained Acts 23, 11 date. And, and all of a sudden, the storm shows up. 
and they decide it is better to lower the anchor and to be driven by the storm. So the ship inevitably falls apart because of fear. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of failure, of rejection, of being betrayed? Many of us, if not all of us, have struggled with fear. Fear is the enemy of faith. Fear always makes us prematurely stop before we reach our destination. It was fear that made Adam hide from God in the garden. It was fear that prompted Elijah to hide from Jezebel. It was fear that made Peter fall in the water and prompted him to deny Jesus three times. We, at one time or another, must confront our fears. Fears. Fear of windows of what we see in the outside world and fear of mirrors of what we see within ourselves. But here lies the antidote. For God has not given us a spirit. For God has not given us. I want every devil, demon, legion, principality, and power of darkness to realize there is a generation of planet shakers that declares for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. Second Timothy 1.7. They feared. Tuvieron temor. They feared. The Bible says they feared and they dropped the anchor. George, help me out here. Where's George? Come here. George, my assistant. He's a union guy, so I have to give him breaks between minutes in the sermon, so I have to. <laughs> Stick around here, George, for a second. They, they fear not making it. They fear failure. They fear death. So they literally drop the anchor. Some of you, because, and watching right now, some of you because of fear. Some of us are guilty of doing this in the past. Some of you because of fear, because of the spiritual because of the spiritual and relational and financial and physical and ministerial storm, you dropped your anchor. You let go of your faith. You let go of your vision. You let go of your dream. You let go of praise and of holiness and integrity. You dropped the anchor. And some of you tonight are just like those in Paul's ship. You are stuck in the proverbial waters of life because you focus more on the storm than on the destination. You are stuck because of what others did to you. You're stuck because of what others said about you. You're stuck because of what you did to yourself. You're stuck. You're not moving. You're not growing. You're not truly living. You're existing. Your joy is stuck. Your faith is stuck. Your dream is stuck. Beyond the rhetoric, you can say whatever you want. If there's no growth, if there's no mobility, then you're stuck. You could be lying to yourself and trying to convince yourself that you're moving, but you're on a treadmill and you're getting nowhere. You're stuck. Your calling is stuck, your integrity is stuck, your relationship is stuck. You're not getting anywhere because you lowered your anchor in the midst of the storm. So you drop your holiness, you drop your faith, you drop your praise. I come to you with fear and trembling, but I have news for you. I've come from far with a word from heaven, and I've come to prophesy. Today is the day that your stuck season comes to an end right here right now forevermore i'm gonna prophesy to somebody god told me to tell you today is the day that you will raise your anchor but you may ask under what authority do you have the audacity to declare such a crazy thing because perfect love I said because perfect love, perfect love, 1 John 4, 18, perfect love, perfect love, expels all fear. Here's what I want you to do. 
I want you to look at your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, George, help me out. We have an anchor here. Here's what we're going to do. At the count of three, I want you to raise the anchor. I'm going I'm to show you what, it, what God showed me prophetically. The moment we raise is the count of three. Every single person who has been stuck, your stuck season will come to an end. But it won't happen. This is not like, oh, isn't that special? It's an illustrated sermon. Oh, about No, it's a prophetic act with eternal consequences. You're stuck. Matter of fact, I'm going to prophesy to you. From this moment on, you'll never be stuck again in the name of Jesus. You're not hearing that. I'm telling you right now, your ministry will not be stuck. Your calling will not be stuck. Your faith will not be stuck. Your relationship will not be stuck. Your marriage will not be stuck. My God, your integrity will not be stuck. Your dream will not be stuck. All right, are you ready? At the count of three. I want you to please help me out. We do this in our church. Just, just cater to me. We do a lot of call and response and talking to your neighbor because neighbors, we want neighbors to talk to each other. So look at your, uh, the one you like. Tell them, neighbor, your stuck season is about to come to an end. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but right here, right now. In the name of Jesus, you're about to raise your anchor. 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 All right, let's do this. Are you ready? Matter of fact, one more time. Look at one more person. Take, tell them, take a good look at me now. Because in a few minutes, I won't be stuck anymore. I'm about to raise my anchor. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me prophesy. Not only will you raise your anchor, but your children will not be stuck. Your children's children will not be stuck. Your children's 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 children will not be stuck. Are you ready? George, are you ready? And by the way, no manipulation here. If you want to stay stuck in your past and stuck in your misery and stuck in your pain and stuck in your sin, and this is not for you, go ahead, go on Facebook, Instagram, do whatever you want. But if you're ready to keep moving, if you're ready to step into your destiny, if you're ready for Rome, then now is the time. Are you ready? You're going to see ministries unstuck. You're going to see ministries, churches that have been just stagnated in ministries and callings and, and integrity and faith. And, you, and God, I'm not moving. You're going to start moving now. Watch. Here, here you go. Ready? One. Here's what I want you to do. When I count to three, all I want you to do is raise your anchor. Woo. There's a breakthrough, 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 there's a breakthrough. One, two. By the way, we all get stuck, all right? So just stop judging. We all at one moment get stuck by anxiety, discouragement, depression. We get stuck. We get stuck in woe. We get stuck in what they did to us or what we did to ourselves. We get stuck in the shame or in the pain and the angst in the consternation and the flux and the instability. We get stuck in the mediocrity. We get stuck. We even get stuck in the victories of yesteryear. We get stuck in the breakthroughs of five years ago and ten years ago. And we get stuck. We get stuck. One. Two, there's an entire generation that will be 
Touch your friend and ask him, did you raise your anchor? Tell him, if not, I'm unstuck. And I'm here to help you because so help me God, I won't permit you to be stranded or stuck where you're at. I'm gonna help you raise your anchor. If you raise your anchor, give God a shout of praise. Raise it! Raise your joy! Raise your worship! Raise your praise! Wake up! Raise it! Raise it! Raise it! Raise it! For I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3.14, God is not looking for those God is not looking for those that are halted by fear. He is looking for those driven by faith. Tell your neighbor, come hell or high water. Tell him, I'm on my way to Rome. Tell him, it's too late now. I'm on my way to Rome. I'm on my way to Rome. Tell him, I'm unstoppable. I'm on my way to Rome. Tell him, my family's on its way to Rome. My church is on its way to Rome. My city is on its way to Rome. My nation is on its way to Rome. I'm on my way to Rome. If you're on your way, raise one hand. You understand Rome means destiny. Rome means the nations. All right, we're going to wrap here. So then, the, the Lord, the Lord shows up. I'm gonna wrap up here. The Lord shows up. <laughs> this is so funny, but it's, it's awkward, funny, interesting, dramatic. The Lord shows up. I kid you not, and, and tells Paul, hey, you, you might want to tell them that you, you see the ship they're on. Um, yeah, I know you're in the midst of a storm. Um, you might want to tell the people around you that you're, it's a two-part prophetic word. You want to hear it, Paul? Yeah, yeah, here it is. Tell them this. Here's the good part of the prophetic word. Everyone on the ship is going to make it. The second part is, but the ship will not. That makes no sense. It, that ship will not make it, but everyone on the ship will make it. You're going to get this in a second. Because sometimes we lose the ship. Sometimes that delivery mechanism that we thought was going to be the tool or the resource or the platform by which we would reach our dream and our destination. And we get so caught up in the ship that God says, wait a minute, you've been dependent too much on what you're in instead of what I have inside of you. So, here it is. How many have lost something 
be it in your life, be it a relationship, a job, a resource, if you've lost something in your life, raise one hand. How many no longer have people in your lives that used to be in your life? Raise both hands. How many had something stolen from you? Raise both hands and a foot. Now, you may no longer have what you counted with, but yet here you are. My point is you did not drown. You did not perish. I'm going to say this one more time. Many of us have lost things along the way. It, what, what we, I thought, like growing up, I thought there was a particular ship that had my name on it until the ship just collided. And it wasn't, I thought it was the ship. And, I, and it was not, and God had a bigger ship. I found out later on that I was actually on a tugboat. And God had an amazing lineup waiting for me. But here we are. Do you know why you're here? Do you know why you didn't drown? Not because of your personality, not because of your intellectual acumen, not because of your financial wherewithal. You know why you're here? It's real simple. It's the Romans 8:11 principle. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that lives inside of you. Tell your neighbor, I'm on my way to Rome. I'm on my way to Rome. I'm going to finish. Stop moaning about the ship you lost. Stop asking God to restore your past. God is not interested in renovating your past. He is interested in releasing your future. God's not interested in renovating your past. He's interested in releasing your future. Tell your neighbor, even without the ship, tell him, even without that relationship, even without that job, even without that resource, even without that income stream, you're still going to make it. Tell him, you're still going to make it. 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 You're still gonna make it. You're still gonna make it. I'm prophesying to somebody right now. You're still gonna make it. 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 What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider those things garbage that I may gain Christ. Philippians 3.8. So stop talking about what you've lost and start talking about where you're going. Because what you lost cannot compare to where you are going. What you lost cannot compare to what God is sending your way. And by the way, he did tell him, everyone in the ship will make it. I wish you would get that. He said, you don't need to worry. Last night an angel of the Lord to, to whom I belong, whom I serve. And he said, do not be afraid because God has graciously given you all the lives of all who say with you. Woo! Everyone in your ship will make it. Everyone in your ship will make it. I dare you to look at your neighbor and tell them, everybody in my ship will make it. So you don't need to worry about your children or your children's children or your children's children's children. I am believing that they will know Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And they will make it. Everyone in your ship will make it. I dare you to raise your hand and say, my family will make it. My friends will make it. My followers will make it. Everyone in my ship will. Make it! All right. Acts 16, 31. <laughs> Believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your house will be saved. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I really am done for reals. All right, all right. And just... So... You,
just as he told me. So keep your courage, men. So he tells Paul, tells him, hey, the ship will make it. You're going to make it. Don't panic on me. And they ask him, how do you know? And this is his response. For I have faith in God that it will happen, verse 25, just as he told me. He got a word. Just as he told me. Right? Paul's on his way. By the way, look up here for a second. Paul is on his way to the most important assignment of his life. Paul's ministry was known in Israel and Jerusalem. But the moment he gets to Rome, he goes global. This is the trip where Paul goes global. You, you don't get that. This is the moment that Paul went, this is it. And, and, and he did it in a way on a ship that ended up scattered in pieces with a bunch of prisoners as a prisoner about to go to trial. Watch this. But he had a word. I, I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to wrap up. I, get, I, I really am going to wrap up. And I'm going to tell you. This is what happened. The reason I'm preaching is because this happened to me this year. All right, look, it's not political at all. By the grace and for the grace of God and for the glory of God, many of you know, for, and I know it's God's grace and glory, His assignment. I've been an advisor to three presidents. This year, I was invited by the current president of the U.S. They invited me to participate in the swearing-in ceremony. It was the first time a Latino, spirit empowered. Meaning, a, a, it was the first time a planet shake up had a swearing participant. I kid you not. So I, but, and by the way, it, it happened when it should have not, it happened when it wasn't supposed to happen. I can't get into details, but let's just say throughout the course of the American political campaign last year, certain things were said about my community that it should not, I should, it, sh it happened when it wasn't supposed to happen. I mean, that's why you need to, it happened when it wasn't supposed to happen. When, and all of a sudden, I got an invitation in the month of December. I got an invitation that said, Reverend Rod, and by the way, I'm, a, I'm not a, I'm not a re Republican Democrat. I am a, I am a Lamb's Agenda guy. So I'm, I, I, to me, it's just a Lamb's Agenda. But I've served three presidents, but here's the scoop. I get a call in December, right before Christmas, Reverend Rodriguez, what is it? The president would like you to participate in the swearing-in ceremony. Now that's, I get to speak before over one billion people around the world that tune in around the world. And, and and, and but but I, and and so I got I I called my executive committee together. I called my executive committee, which is my wife and my three kids. <laughs> because of the nature of the, the politics in America, it got really nasty. So I like I didn't want to get things thrown in my house, and and then my church is forty percent uh, forty percent. Caucasian, white, 40% African American, and then 20% Latino and Asian. So my church was divided in the campaign too, so I didn't want to be unemployed. So I'm keeping it real. So so what had happened was, no, this is, so I spoke to the executive committee, and my, and, and my wife reminded me that when I was 14 years old, I got a word. Just like Paul got a word. I got a word, and the word was, you will pray for presidents. You will advise presidents. I got a word about that platform when I was 14 years old and I've been through my storms and I've been through my shipwrecks but I'm still standing and I know I had a word. Are you with me right now? So here it is, here it is, let me tell you what happened. So by the way, and, and I knew it was God because I didn't tell him yes immediately. I said I'm going to pray about it, let me, let me think about it and pray about it. And then all of a sudden I, I called them back and said, are you going to tell me what to say? Because in, in America, in certain activities I participated in before, they actually scripted for you. And you, you're just out there basically reading a teleprompter. So I went, are you going to tell me what to say or, how, or what to pray or what to read? And this was the comment from the inaugural committee. said, whoa, hey, Reverend, quote, this is his phone call. Hey, Reverend, no, we want you to share whatever the Spirit places in your heart to share. So my wife is with me, and we go, and we're there, and you, some of you saw it, and so we're there, and, and, and so we get, and we're, and we're right, and I'm seated here, 
I, I wish you could, I'm right behind all the presidents. Like, all, like, not like behind, like four rows back, like, like rhetorically behind. No, literally, I'm right behind. I just, President George Bush, Laura Bush, President Clinton, Hillary Clinton. Over here was President Obama and First Lady Michelle, and the other side was uh, uh, President-elect Donald Trump and his wife, and, and the Supreme Court was here. So I'm here, I'm seated, by the true story. My daughter could attest to this. I'm seated here, and I didn't know there was a camera on me. And you know, like when you're on, like you're texting or something? And my kids were texting me. So I'm texting back. All of a sudden, my daughter texts me and says, Dad, shut your mouth. Because I was texting, I was like this. Lauren, true story. God is my witness. My wife could attest, no, not making one thing up. I'm about to go up. I'm about to go up. Don't forget, this is all about on my way to Rome. That was my Rome. That was my Rome on the most powerful political stage on the planet. That was my Rome. I'm about to go up. And I get an inbox in my Facebook Messenger. And, and I'm, now I'm allowed to say this. And here's what it said. Right before I'm about to go up. It says, Reverend Rodriguez, we've been praying and interceding. And the Lord showed us that that place, there's a bomb there, it's about to blow up. You need to run out of there immediately and not do what you're going to do. And they spiritualize it. We've been praying and interceding. And I'm going, la sangre de Cristo, Padre. I'm going, like, seriously, part of me went like, oh, do I, do I give it to Secret Service? Do I tell somebody? What do I, I mean, this is, you've got to be kidding me. And the Spirit of God just told me, in my heart, he just said, this is not me. You have a word. You have an assignment. So I'm going to tell you what I did. And, and I'm going to teach you what to do when anything comes up against your destiny to roam. I know that I have an ability to be the conduit of Facebook that Facebook does not give me. Actually, God gave me in the book of Matthew. God told me whatsoever I bind, whatsoever I block. So let me tell you what I did. She kept on inboxing her. I got so tired. I had about three minutes before I went up. I went boom, Facebook, enter, boom, user, boom. And I went boom. I blocked the living daylights out of that lady so she would. I blocked her. When hell rises up against your dream, when hell rises up against your destiny, don't tolerate it, block it, bind it, rebuke it. Stop it! I'm on my way to Rome! Stand with me. You are standing. Whoever's not standing, stand with me. Couple of slick guys on the boat, on the ship, that try to lower the lifeboats, and said, "Hey, Paul, just in case your word doesn't work out, we have Plan B, baby." I kid you not. They started lowering the lifeboats. Paul said, "Hey, get, let the lifeboats drift away." In other words, let me speak to you parenthetically. Paul was telling them, "Uh-uh, there is no Plan B here. In God, there's either Plan A, 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 A." You either trust God for everything or trust them for nothing. You can't trust God and have a plan B or a plan C. Sometime in life, we have to learn to let the lifeboat drift away. We have to show God, Psalm 62, verse 5, I depend on God alone. I trust you for everything. And the boat fell apart. The ship fell apart. And they made it to Malta, to an island in the Mediterranean. They made it to Malta, holding on to pieces of the shipwreck. Because sometimes this is all we have. Just a piece of a wreck that we hold just one piece 
a broken piece of wood. Read it. And that's how they got there. So I don't care how broken you may be, how shattered you may be, God does amazing things of broken pieces. I said, God does amazing things with broken pieces. Somebody shout, I'm on my way to run. Sometimes this is all we have. Always reminding us that the purpose of God is greater than the brokenness of man. That's all we have. But they made it. I said they made it. Y'all didn't hear me. They made it. I want you to know that if you're born again and Jesus is the Savior of your life, you're not going to make it. You already made it. Tell your neighbor, I made it. I made it. You made it not because you perfectly held on to God you made it because God perfectly held on to you you made it not because your faith is so efficient you made it because his grace is always sufficient You made it. The moment you learn to worship with your wounds and praise throughout your problems and move within the mess and sing through the sorrow and dance in the drought. And let me remind you, now that you've made it, don't forget, those that prayed with you in the drought deserve to dance with you in the rain. So make sure you're rewarded. <laughs> Lift up your hands. You're on your way to Rome. Rome represents the nations. Rome represents destiny, your calling. You're not alive by coincidence. You're alive by divine providence for such a time as this. You are alive just like Paul for the purpose of shining the light of truth and grace and love. The hope that is Christ, crucified, resurrected, and coming back again. You, you're on your way to Rome. You're on your way to Rome. And on your way to Rome, you may experience some storms and nor'easters. And on your way to Rome, you may lose the ship, that delivery mechanism that you believe was the one that would take you to your place of destiny. But even without that ship, you're still going to make it. Raise your hands. I have a minute and 30 seconds left. I'm not going to force you, coerce you, entice you. If you say, Pastor Sam Rodriguez, this message is 192% me. Come hell or high water, I'm on my way. And from this moment on, my stuck season is over. I will never get stuck because I will never lower my anchor until I reach my destination. And I will not be, if this is for you, and you will no longer be driven by your past or fear or your failures or what others have done to you, when I count to three, just come out of your seat and go somewhere and show God that you're on your way to Rome. Ready? One, two, three. Do that right now. Expert. One, two, three. Just one, two, three. Just show God you're on your way to Rome. Show God you're on your way. 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 I'm on my way to Rome. I'm on my way to Rome, I'm on my way to Rome, I'm on my way to Rome. I'm on my way to Rome, you're on your way to Rome. You're on your way to Rome. You're on your way to save the nation. You're on your way to change the nation. You're on your way to transform the nation. You're on your way to Rome. You're on your way to Rome. Let me pray over you and give it to Pastor Russell. Lift up your hands. Again, I don't care how broken things may be. I don't care how shattered things became in your life. 
God does great things with broken pieces. If you're just holding on to a little bit, just a piece of the dream, a piece of the calling, a piece of the impartation, just one piece, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Because what God has placed inside of you is greater than anything hell can place in front of you. I'm on my way to Rome. Let me pray over you right now. Where's Pastor Russell? Is he here? Where is he? Is he here? Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Just like with Paul, you are calling this generation to Rome, to the prophetic, proverbial, metaphorical Rome. You are calling us to a place where your name will be exalted, where your name will reach every single community, every tribe, every creed, every race, every language. Once again, you are calling us to Rome. So Lord, we say yes, and we surrender all. Raise your hands. And we say yes. We say yes. We say yes, we say yes, we say yes. We say yes to the call to roll. We say yes. And Lord, matter of fact, repeat after me and say, Lord, we say yes. We say yes to our assignments. We are on our way to Rome. And we commit ourselves today, never, ever again, lowering our anchors until we reach our destination. Heavenly Father, never again will we permit fear or failure or sin or the past or criticism or the need for validation to drive us. From this moment on, we will be driven by the grace and the truth and the love and the power and the presence and the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And raise both hands and say, with or without the ship, We're going to make it. And everyone with me will make it likewise. I'm holding on. Not to just any piece of wood. I'm holding on to the wood that is your cross. To your saving grace. I'm still holding on to the wood. The life of Jesus the death of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus. And that's how I know I will make it safely on shore. And I give you the glory in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, I'm on my way to Rome!
Hi, this is Pastor Sam Rodriguez from Planet Shakers 2017. I hope and pray that this message has blessed your life. Come hell or high water, we're on our way to Rome. If you want to continue watching live right now, go online, daystar.com forward slash Planet Shakers. And if this message ministered to your heart, to your dream, to your destiny, right now there's a number on the screen, or you can likewise visit us at daystar.com forward slash prayer. Hey, great things are coming your way. The best is yet to come. Let's do this. Let's go change the world.